Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Christina, and I'm with Atlantic Institute, and I am the program manager. Um, I am here with Jenna Fay. She is in Charleston area, and today we have our cultural creations class, and we are learning basket weaving. She's going to show us what she does, um, and then we do have her website available if any of you would like to purchase any of these that she makes. Um, we know that tourism and everything has been slow this past year, and so many small businesses are, are not doing as well, but um, this is a very interesting technique. And so I'll go ahead and let you um, turn over turn it over to you, Jennifer. Hello, everybody. I am Jennifer Singleton. I've been weaving baskets for about 31 years now. Started when I was about seven years old. My aunt taught me how to weave the basics of a bottom, which I probably am gonna show you in the next 30 minutes of how I turn transform this start into a bottom of a basket which it would not be this big today. And it may not even be this big today, but I'm just gonna show you a little bit of the uh, basket weaving and uh, show you a little bit of the basket weaving. I'm sorry if there's any noise in the background. I am at work because I am a storyteller at Boone Hall Plantation. So um, there's weddings and all kinds of stuff going on today. But I'm gonna try my best to show you what I do um, the best of my knowledge. So this is a basket stir in which most of the time it starts off with pine needles and palm. These are palm fronds that we strip down when these are the binding of the basket. This is sweet grass. And sweet grass is um, very, very, uh, expensive right now because the fields that we were allowed to actually go and get the sweet grass from has closed down indefinitely. So now we have to have people that would go out and find us sweet grass to actually bring it to us. And um, it's harder that way than me just driving in somewhere and then I can be able to pull as much as I want. But uh, this is my liquid gold, my, my grass gold as I called it anytime that I have a sweet grass class. And then we're gonna get started with these three materials. My family has been doing baskets for pretty much the whole life. So you said they closed down indefinitely. Is that due to COVID stuff? Um, you know, when they say one bad apple spoils the whole bunch, Someone did something wrong and they closed it down. For, it was been, it's been closed for the last three years now. So any sweet grass that we can come across, um, we try our best to hold on to it as much as we can because we don't know if we're gonna get any more. So that's one reason why when I have classes, I also tell my students that uh, if you drop them on the floor, you need to pick it all up. <laughs> Absolutely. Do not waste anything. And they understand because I explain what's going on with the, you know, the grasses and the different things and um, they do well with it. Okay, so then you have like the pine needles all together there, right? And then you yes. weave that palm frond? Yes, so this bad, these sweetgrass baskets are very, um, they're very close to how they do the pine needle basket. Only difference is we use different materials. We all we use pine needles, but we use different materials in the sweet grass, bulrush, the palm fronds, um, and that's about it. And then you can also, if you want to color your basket, there's a way to color these these materials where you can have a colored basket also. Do I color mine? No, all mine are authentic colors of whatever material I have. But most of the time when we wanna add sweet grass, we have to split the grass, push it in as far as it can go. And then we have to go by and to the next stitch. Um, we have one of the viewers was asking, do you have to dampen the pine needles before co coiling them? Do I have to soak them? 
Yeah, do you have to like get them wet before you coil no, them? I mean, it's best to get them wet because of the fact that um, pine needles will stick you and go into your fingers and stay in there for a long time until you pick it out. So yes, um, this one is not wet because of the fact that I already had it started before today. And I don't like to use them when they're fresh. I like to use them when they're a little bit dried out because that makes my basket um, harder. And I don't have to worry about them getting soft or any of that. So what I just did this now was pick up my this my this my Wait, say that one more time because I think I lost you for a second. Excuse me? I said, I think I lost you for a second. You said what you did was, and then you kind of cut out for a second. You might want to turn your volume up. Okay. Okay. What was you saying again? I said, um, you said what I'm doing is, and then I, your bandwidth kind of shrunk down for a second. So I was trying to look and see and ask what it was you just- Oh, I picked up some sweet grass that I dropped and I put it inside of my basket. Gotcha. Now this process takes a very long time. So um, I may not have a basket by the end of this. <laughs> yes, no, because, I know. Uh, as you can see, that's just one row right. so far that I've put on here since um, we started the video. Right. And so because I asked everybody earlier, um, a, a lot of people have not been down to Charleston at all. I've had a few that have, but a lot of people are coming from like San Francisco Bay Area, Southeast Ireland, um, the UK, Canada. Uh, East East England, Arlington, Virginia, Wyoming. So I know they come from completely different areas than what Charleston would be like. So can you describe from them a little bit about the the culture in the Charleston area? So in the Charleston area, we had um, lots and lots of slavery. So a lot of the um, African American or Black people were brought over here for the ideas and the understanding on how to plant and cultivate certain things. Um, the Gullah Geechee people, well, they say mostly is from Sierra Leone, which was where they actually, um, where they actually made these baskets from. So we, our ancestors and the descendants of our ancestors, we weave sweetgrass baskets in Charleston, which is the number one Charleston art in Charleston um, to, the first thing that they did was it was for to help make money for their families. And then they decided that, you know, um, in about the, the Great Depression, a lot of the basket weavers lost a lot of income because the baskets weren't selling, things were going bad. So we've lost baskets for about six times in the last 100, 200 years. But if we do not have our children that are our descendants now, to pick this up, we will not have sweetgrass baskets anymore because the kids are not interested in actually doing the baskets anymore. All right, very interesting. All right, while you were talking, I had a couple of questions come through and I'll go ahead and read them. Um, Lily was saying, she was wondering if you could describe the weaving process because um, she was trying to see if she could get an up close image of the weaving process of what you're doing. Um, okay. So I don't know if you want to move a little closer to see if we can get a, like a. So the weaving process. Um, first of all, hello. You need a tool. Okay. Without the tool, you cannot make a stitch. You have to go in and out each one. Without going out in and out each one, you're going to have a holy basket, as in it's going to be uh, too much space in between them. Um, and the weaving process is all in a coil pattern. 
Gotcha. Okay. Lily, I hope that helps. Um, Karen was wondering what the length is of the pine needles. The length of the pine needles can be up to um, 12 inches or longer. Right. I was going to say typically like here in Georgia and, and in, in Charleston and South Carolina area, we're kind of very familiar with pine needles. Um, when I lived in Florida, everybody mulches their yards with cypress mulch a lot of times. But when I moved up to the South, because you're, if you're in Florida, you're not in the South. When you move up, you're in the South. Um, it was the first time I ever saw people had big old bunches, the landscaping companies had huge bunches of pine needles all wrapped up and they took them and they spread them across all the yards. And I thought, oh my God, that's what I used to weed and pull out of the yards in Florida. But up here, they use it for a lot for ground cover. So um, they are about a foot long and there's about three or four strands of them together in a, in a container, just so you know. Um, and then- um, Can you yeah. This is a pine needle right here, and I can see how long it is. This is about 10 right. to 12 inches in my hand right now. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and they're a longer pine than this that I have in my car that we use for our baskets also. We do not use the short ones because it takes too much of the short ones to actually weave in a basket. So we use the longer ones because it takes less time. Right. All right. So then um, one of the other ladies on here was asking, is there a difference between this basket weaving versus um, Susan? I don't know if you want to help me. You, you said, is there a difference between this basket weaving versus read other, other than materials? So I think I'm missing a word in that question. Um. Uh, there's really not a difference between this basket weaving and pine needle basket weaving other than the materials, no. Okay. There's something called pine basket weaving or um, the uh, Navajo Indians have a basket that they weave also, but they the difference is materials that they use. They also use sweetgrass, but they use some kind of a raffia or something that binds their baskets together. Right, right. Very cool. Um, and then Glenn, let me just see for a second. I think it was, Glenda was asking, are they all green green leaves? Like, are they all green? Or are they all braided? She said green, like the color green. These are all green leaves, right? Um. It's a green tint to this grass because this grass is still fresh. It's dry, but it's still fresh. As it sits in the sun, it will get, as it sits in the sun, it can get to a golden color. Wow, that's cool. Oh, because if you weave it when it's a little bit fresher, then it gets in the sun and it helps to dry it and cure it and make it hard and tight, I would think, correct? That is beautiful. Yeah, I know, I thought that was beautiful too. So as the basket age, just like how we would age, it, it ages with grace. <laughs> right, right. So um, Karen from Minnesota said that uh, they only have short needles over there. And she was asking, what is the tool and where do you get it? Well, the tool is uh, the end of an old fork or spoon handle. And it's grind down the way that I like to weave with it. And what was the second question? Um, she said, where do you, where would you get it? So I'm guessing if it's ground down, do you make it? You make your own tool? Out your kitchen? I'm thinking I'm probably make- I go to Google buy all the used spoons and fork that I can because I have, I have classes when I do sweetgrass here in Charleston and I have to have my tools for them to be able to weave their basket with. But it's the end of an old fork or spoon handle. Oh, and then you grind it off there like that. I gotcha. Oh, 
Um, Julie, I don't know if, if we're if you're going to be able to see up close. Like I don't know if Jennifer, can you come up if close? If you come one? to Charleston, I'm at Boone Hall Plantation. Yes, that too. I was going to say they were. She was asking where can we go if to you see. You come it? to Charleston, my Boone Hall Plantation, Wednesday through Saturday, from 11:15 to 4 o'clock. My shows are 11:15. My um 115 and 315. So I have three shows per day. So once I finish this, then I get back on this stage and I get back and do my shows. What do you do for your show? I am a Gullah Geechee storyteller here at Boone Hall Plantation. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Glenda, the tool she said was actually the fork. Um, and she grinds off like the prongs part of the fork. And so the tool is pretty much made, self-made in a way. And so it's um, just like they ground off the end of the fork. I'm gonna just say my son's back scratcher is over here. It's kind of like if this was the fork and this is the piece, or let's just say this is the fork prongs over here. Yeah, see she ground it off so that you just have like this part as a handle and then this part as the piece. Very interesting. Um, she said, can we have her on a big screen instead of you talking? Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you on my computer, you are big. I put it on speaker view. So I don't know how to do that for everybody else. I'm not nervous. <laughs> well, I know they'd like to see you and see... I, I'm an entertainer. I'm not nervous at all. Like um, I write my own plays while I'm here. I write my own plays and everything. Um, I sing in front of them. I dance in front of them. I'm I'm pretty much an entertainer. I'm just waiting on that big break where I could get my own movie. Well, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put it on speaker view, but then I had to pin um, her instead of you. Because if you okay. if you don't pin the person, the right. speaker, it goes back and forth. So maybe that's her problem. Okay. Because I don't even know. Does that make sense? Time. Yes, it does. Okay. Because I'm only seeing her make the baskets, which are beautiful, by the way. Thank you. I almost asked to hate. Can someone tell me how do you spotlight the maker or how do you pin? If you go to the top right hand corner of the picture of the person and press on the corner, it will appear a little thing that'll say um, pin or a little um, thing with three dots. Very good. Okay. They want you to pin my information for me. I'm going to do that too, but I'm going to be quiet for a second so everybody can pin you if they need to. So what doing these baskets, you actually need to be able to weave each stitch. Um, if you don't weave each stitch, you can have a very weak basket. Um, like I said, I've been doing baskets for 30 plus years now, and I'm only 38 years old. But you start off, if you start off as a child, it's something like riding a bicycle and you never forget. Yes, when you said you'd been doing it 30 years, I was thinking you're not that old. You couldn't have. I'm, I'm 38. <laughs> Do you have children that you're teaching this to or nieces and nephews? I have all boys and my boys know how to do it. And one of my boys, he's 20 years old. He's in the army. And then I have a 14 year old and an 11 year old. And they only do it if they think they're going to get something out of it. I understand. Um, they should do it all the time because that's, you know, easy income for them. But these children are into technology and stuff nowadays, and they really don't um, care to do the old-fashioned stuff, as they call it. Yeah, but it's your heritage. You you know, 
At least they know how to do it. The kids don't understand heritage nowadays. That's just like me when I started making quilts um, because my grandmother was a quilter and I started being a quilter also. And my husband looked at me sideways and he was like, are you going crazy? And I looked at him, I said, no, I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep all of my heritage together as one because when you think about Gullah Geechee, you think about all the things that our ancestors were able to do. Um, and we should know how to do that too, as in, you know, cook, clean, cook, um, sweep, quilt, even making yarn and, and doing different things and knitting and crocheting and stuff like that. Because if the world closes down, as in the computers shut down and we can't use the computers anymore, you're not going to know how to use your hands. That's true. Like, don't. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand these children because they can't cursive. <laughs> sign your name what, the, what does that mean is what my kids say sign your name it means the curse of your name make a signature so this is how far I've gotten since we started Now I could stop here and actually make a tiny basket or I can keep going and end up with something either this size or this size. So it all depends on um, you know, what am I trying to accomplish today? We have I don't to ask. really want to accomplish anything because I am just weaving to show you guys. And then I have tomorrow and Monday and Tuesday off to do whatever else I like to do. Um, one, um, hold on. Laura was asking, how long does it take on average to make a basket? It all depends on the basket. Um, you can go from two, three hours on a small basket to weeks, months, years on a bigger basket. It all depends on the weaver. If they have the time or the patience to actually sit and weave a basket 14, 15 hours a day. Right. I don't have the time anymore. I'm right. at work from 11 to four or four days out of the week. So to sit and weave a basket for 14, 15 hours, that'll only be on my Sunday, Monday, or Tuesdays when I have the time to sit down, watch a movie, and just weave baskets and relax, kind of um, thinking about where do I want my ideas to take me with the baskets. Right, yeah. Um, we had somebody else that was asking as well. Um, can you talk about how you end a basket and attach handles? In the basket on your ending. Yeah, how do you end a basket? And then how would you attach handles? Um it all depends on what handle I'm using. Okay. And I think it's important for everybody to also know that this is like a, a very big um this is a very big cultural, like it's cultural creations, and this is a very big cultural thing that's made so it's not something that we can all probably sit and learn and figure out how all of it's done because um because this is like handed down from tr from tradition to tradition to tra 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 tradition to tradition they came down to charleston and they wanted to have a class with me they can have a one-on-one -on -one, um private class with me at any given time, that's not a problem. I do do classes so that I can have time with other people and show them what the right. basket is about because a lot of people say, oh, they're so expensive, but they don't know what goes into making a basket. Right, Once it's definite time. And making a basket, then you'd be like, oh no, they worth every dime. I and can imagine. Mm -hmm. And that's where we come to the conclusion of any time that somebody wants to, um, you know, purchase a basket and they see, oh, it's $300. But you don't know what went into making that $300 basket until you actually seen it hands-on yourself. 
Right, right. All right, we had Bonnie ask the patterns in the big basket that you showed them, is that just from changing materials or how is it created? Yes, it is. Um, so in the bigger basket, here in the center is my pine needles. Then I have palm in each stitch. The lightest color is your sweet grass, more bulrush, sweet grass, bulrush, and then your palms in each stitch. And then the braid around it is um, almost like having two rows that you're working with at one time. Gotcha. And then what um, Laura was asking, what do you use to dye some of your materials? Um, most people use Ritz dye. Um, oh, the, Ritz. Right, the, Ritz, the, Ritz, the regular box that we would use for um, like tie dyeing a shirt and stuff. Uh-huh. Have you ever woven with bamboo at all? Have you ever tried with bamboo? I have not. Um, I have bamboo in my yard, but I have not tackled that task yet. The last time I played with bamboo, I almost lost my fingers, so. <laughs> I can imagine it's very hard. Well, I went to go get some for a friend that wanted to prop her tomato plant up last year and I, I snipped my finger with the garden shears. So yeah, last time, that was the last time I messed with bamboo. <laughs> Um, it was not a pretty picture. Uh, yeah. Um, Mike was saying that he's taken classes to make pine needle baskets in the past, and he used sinew for attaching the coiling, not palm. Have you ever used that sinew? I guess is how you say it. Yeah, sinew is. I have Mike. to look up what sinew is, but we use palm. Um, so the beginning of basketry, they actually use split oak and bulrush to bull these baskets up. And that goes way back to Mary, which is Moses' mother in the biblical days um, when she made the basket to save Moses from Pharaoh. And uh, the basket was lined in tar so the water did not get inside of them. Um, and they used split oak, which is the oak off the tree and bulrush. Then they decided that the split oak was too much and it tear their hands up too much to actually keep weaving with that. So they found out that they can use palm bark. And they started using the palm bark, the palm bark, and then they threw away the palm fronds. But they decided that they would try how to use the palm fronds one day. And now today we still use the palm fronds in our basket. Yeah, and if you are in the South, the south area, palm fronds grow everywhere a lot. Yeah. So. Um, somebody else said that they could probably use peels from sweet corn. Have you ever pe used corn peels? Like, I guess, would that be the husk? Yeah, um, that's a little too soft. All right, all right. And then Mike replied back that sinew, I think that it's now like a waxed thread is what I'm guessing the sinew is. Okay, no, I haven't oh, used oh. sinew. I think that is mostly used in the Indian baskets. Well, yes, Dolly, because Shelly commented that real sinew is an animal product, but there are alternatives. So I would assume that that comes from the innards of an animal that is then yeah, dries the or skin something. Skin, uh, which holds the muscles together or the skin on the, on the animal. Right, right. Right, let me see. Very interesting. I know you can sit, if you go to Charleston, you can sit and you can watch them weave the baskets. Tendons. Oh, gotcha. It's from the tendons. Between the muscles. Right. Yes. I was thinking it was the viscous layer maybe as well, but the tendons. I have not. I think that's a little messy. It, it probably is. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to agree. And when you have palm fronds that grow all over, it's, it's much easier to use what's- Easier, I can get it from here on my job too. So it's not like, you know, I have to go too far. I can just drive around, right. find whatever palm that's in the bushes and cut whatever I want. Okay, so this is my question is, as you're, as you're weaving that into a circle, 
as it gets, as the pine needles in the sweet grass get shorter, are you just inserting new needles into it? I am. You, so you just insert it as it goes. So you just, yeah, it's kind of like feeding. You don't want to want it to go hungry as you go. So this would be a little too skinny for me. So I would add more grass to it to make it um, a little bit thicker. And then as the grass gets shorter again or thinner again, I would add more. So you just keep adding as you go. Right. Yes, there is no plastic string in here. It's all natural resources. It's all pretty much what you could find on a plantation many years ago or what you could find out in the woods or what you could find near the water. So it's all made out of natural resources. Yeah, there's no pine, there's no no synthetics as in glue or any of that added to the baskets neither. It's pretty much all pure talent. <laughs> in my opinion, I think you've you've actually come quite a little quite a way. Yes, I have. As it gets bigger, it's, it's a little bit easier to work with. When it's small, that's the hardest part because you're kind of trying to get your finger in between each one and then, uh, you know, get it as tight as you can without breaking or popping anything. And as uh, pretty as you can because you don't want an ugly piece. Right. And when you're pushing that palm frond through, are you, are you using that tool or are you good? You are. So you just push your tool in. Hold your space, and then I pull my other one. Ah, uh, well, that one gotcha. I'll put my new one in. Then I'll put my palm, my thing back in. Gotcha. Okay. Um, somebody else was asking, is it the only way to make a basket? Like, is this the only way you can make a basket, or? I mean, I'm wondering. I can with string i can make a basket with yarn i can make a basket with any of those things but it won't be authentic to my culture right i can make basket out of fabric if i had to it's just it's just not authentic to my culture to change the basket up and i mean you can invent new things and i've seen people use it with pottery um i've seen people use it with um boards i've seen them i've made placards with wood and different things with them. So you can take this basket, you can take these sweet grass, this bull rush, and this palm, and you can in, 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 integrate it with other things, but it's not authentic. So I only do those things when I actually get someone to ask me, can you do so and so for me? And then, then I'll be like, okay, let me let me think about it. And then I'll craft something for them and see if they like it. Like um, one lady asked me for a um, sweet grass mirror. And I had oh, to think wow. about it. I had to think about it and then I actually made her a sweet grass mirror. But I had to think about it first because integrating this with something else, you have to think about how is it going to stick together? How is it going to, you know, proceed um, once you're finished with it? Right, right. Very cool. So I'm assuming since you are an entertainer and you're used to stuff like this, you can, can you, can you weave and, and just tell one story? Cause I would actually kind of, I know the storytellers down from the area that tell the Gullah stories and stuff like that. A lot of the people here are probably not familiar with any of that. I was going to say, can you tell one story? Yeah. So, um, this is about my great grandmother. You saw all oh, pack on and that was pack on I bring me back a red fox. I'm gonna cook this thing up. I'm gonna make them taste real good. So she goes in the kitchen. She fixes the feed. She fixes the fox up, and she makes sure it's all clean, all the finished, and everything is missing, is taken out of it. And then Pat invites all his friends over, and Pat and all his friends decide that they want to go hunting, and they'll be back soon. So Ma wait good until Pat come back home, and she fixes him a nice hearty plate. All his friends are still in the yard, and everybody said, Oh, what I is you to cook there in that pot? We is, we is, you got this. She never told him what it was. So she went back in the kitchen and she asked him out throughout the window. She said, Do y'all want some? Would y'all like a plate? Everybody said, Yeah, 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 we would like a plate. Go ahead, fix some fries. So they went and they fixed them. She went in the kitchen, she fixed all the past friends a plate, and everybody's eating the food and everybody having a good time. They said, Oh, this tastes y'all good, boy. This tastes good. Oh, this tastes real good. And everybody's eating and they finish the food. And then uh, Ma come back. 
Ma come back out the house and she said, now nah, you want no for pattern yeah, for me to cook? And they um they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to know what I button you would cook that because it sure had taste good. So she said, well, that been that red fox pie, bring you. Y'all eat good, any your belly full? No, no, nobody eats fox anymore, but my great grandmother would cook that thing to the tea. <laughs> and probably make it good, look, so, taste good. That's a Southern thing, though, for the Gullah Geechee people, because we didn't have much. We had to make what we had taste good. So anything that we cooked with squirrel, coon, rabbits, or any of those things, we made it taste like it was magnifique, bon appetit. Like you wanted to bite your fingers after you ate it, even though it was wild food. Very cool. Very cool. Um I had a, a late one of one of the ladies one of the viewers here, Helen. She said, "What did you use to make the big deep basket that you showed earlier?" The same materials. The same. The same materials. So you have your pine needle start, your balm, your palm, and then the sweet grass goes all the way through the bottom until you get to the edge, and then it has your bulrush. Then you have your bulrush that comes up the side. You have your sweet grass here. You have bulrush here, sweet grass here, and your handle is sweet grass and bulrush also. So it's all the same material. Just use, um, say for instance, I did one, two, three, four, five, six rows of bulrush there, three rows of sweet grass here, three rows of bulrush there, and three more rows of sweet grass here. So all together, this basket is. 15 rows deep plus the handle makes it 18 rows deep. Right. All right. And then the handle, did you make the handle separately and then and then weave it on? Because it no, has a whole different pattern. It's all one piece. It's all one piece. All Very one cool. Piece. Um, so this is the base of the basket, but when you want to make the handle, you come off of the base with the same grass and you make the handle of the base here. And then when you go around that, you go around that and that stays stable right there where it's at. Very cool looking. I like the way that you designed that and thought of that. I think you are close to even a pot holder, not a pot holder, like a hot plate. It's a coaster right now. <laughs> a coaster, yes. Yeah, yeah. A coaster, a hot plate. Hi. Hello. They told us 245, but you saying 315, so. It's 315. I don't know if they changed the schedule, but our schedule changed from 1115 to 115 to 315. So I have three shows. Sure. And I'm in the middle of a Zoom right now. So yeah, it'll be at 315. Okay. It's going to be at 315, guys. Okay. Not 315. But you can go sit at the dock and catch the breeze if you want to just rest. Yes, ma'am. You can just go rest. Or you can stay here and rest. Okay. Whatever is up to you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. And how long have you guys, have you been at the Boone Hall Plantation? I've been here for over a year now. Do you enjoy I it? I'm storytelling for pretty much all my life. <laughs> I should have turned my notifications off, but I'm sorry. That's okay. I did a um I did a storytelling event up here in Greenville one time before. In South Carolina, and it went, it went very well. And actually, you know, but as I will say storytelling is a dying, um, a dying art as well as like like sweet like basket making and stuff like that. Some of these things, because mm -hmm. kids don't want to sit and listen, like they used to. Oh, actually, and um, because I have my um my storytelling when I had I had a hundred kids last week, Wednesday. Very cool. And um, because I interact with the students they actually enjoy it more when you interact with them, like have them to be a part of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I had a hundred kids and nobody got out of hand and we all had a great time. And we were right here at Boone Hall Plantation um, having a great time. So it all depends on who the person is and how they interact with the people. 
Yes, very much so. I'm actually going to be an orange bird on a tent at the um, Behavioral Wellness Center um, doing storytelling and basket weaving there. I know it depends on the size of the basket, but on average size, how much material do you go through? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> you just add to it until you get there, right? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to be smart or anything, but we, uh, I don't know, if, can you see my grass box? Yes, ma'am. So <laughs> this is my material and I do not count how many I use. I just have a feel for it. Um, so that, that question, I just could not answer because I have no idea. <laughs> I actually took a basket making class, not like this. Um, and I don't know what it was, the material, it was, it was just called reed. It was flat. Yeah, you was doing strips. Uh, the, uh, split oak basket scripts. Um, this is a lot different. Yes, it looks different. Yeah, that basket, you're just going in and out and making a design. These baskets, we actually can create different patterns and different designs that uh, blow your mind. Well, you are, you are correct saying that until you've done something, you, do, you don't have a clue what goes in it because I've, I've made several and every one I make, I say I'm not making another one. And uh, then I get talked into trying a different one, but uh, they're they're wow. not easy. No, ma'am, they're not. Already noted, you know, that you were standing there. So you're ready. Um, I want to stick a screenshot in here. Um, those of you up in up in South Carolina at all today or this weekend, we have this huge festival up here called Artisphere. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Um, there's usually over 150 different artists from all over and they all get together and they have tents up and down um, the main street in, in Greenville. And um, they have, you, the rule is you have to pretty much make your own stuff. Um, I'm just gonna do a screenshot here of my Facebook. Um, I just wanna post what, I have a friend, Jerry, that makes these baskets out of wood. Um, I'm not quite sure, but to talk about the different designs and the different ways um, that things can be done, it's just kind of like very interesting. And I'm not gonna be able to send a picture. Well, if y'all are interested in any of my things, you can... Uh go on my website and order anything, or you can actually uh, go on my website and you can actually order a class with me if you like to also. Um, yeah, I posted the link twice, um, I believe. So I wanted to make sure everybody has seen it that, and they've been able to click on it, that it did work. So I that is some beautiful it. stuff. Thank you. Isn't it? Uh, the earrings, I've never seen the braided earrings like that, or whatever you would call it. I called it braided, but um, <laughs> pretty. Yeah, that, like, I, like I said earlier, I've done belt buckles and all kinds of stuff out of sweetgrass. So sweetgrass is very versatile. Um, I can kind of just change it up if I, if I need to, however I need to, whatever I need to do with it. Yeah. Some very interesting designs on your on your website. Those are beautiful. Thank you. All right, here, I think I found. Um, there's a link to a photo. Hold on, there was a link to a photo that I just stuck in there. Just so you can see, like, it's so very interesting when you look at wood and the different designs of different things. And I was like, I don't even know how that gets done. Um, and those are not inexpensive at all. And you have to get it, this art stuff is just not, and you, you can't find it. It's so this is a top basket. That's oh, all my money falling out. <laughs> <laughs> this is a top basket that is made yes. out of sweet grass, bulrush, pine needles, and palm. 
Very cool. Yeah, very cool. I think I've seen some of these made out for tortilla shells or something as well that people have had um, small things, small containers, and I've seen like baskets almost, and they put like their tortilla shells in them. Yeah, it keeps them warm. Keeps them warm. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be very talented to get that top to match that bottom. I, I absolutely. <laughs> Um, um, Bonnie was asking, she was asking the ruffles on the baskets on your website, are they added after the basket is made? No. Okay. They're, they're all one. Everything that's with those baskets are all one, except when you make a top basket. That's the only thing that will be separated because you'll have a top and then you'll have a bottom. But when you think of a top basket, you can't think of the price because you have two baskets at one. You will get two baskets because the top, the top is one basket and the other one is the bottom. So that's another basket. So when you collect them together, it makes one basket, but you actually have to work on two. Gotcha. And I know, I know you're talking that, Bonnie, you're talking that first picture that you scroll to that has that that ruffle pattern that goes up and down like a scalloped pattern. That's all and one piece. It comes out when you finish the basket part, it comes off the side and then it goes down the sides. And then you just keep going around the sides until you get it as, as depth as you want. So sometimes I put two. Sometimes I put three. Sometimes I could put nine to 15 of them on there and the ripples just get bigger and bigger. Wow. Because that's just like so I like an ear basket. I will tell you all that if you are used to Paula um, leading these, she is much more creative than I am. I have very, very little creativity skill. Um, I couldn't even think of a pattern like this. Like some of these that you've come up with, like I really like that bread bowl. And I really like the four four corner bowl too. Like it's just so very cool. And I can see like you know, a hundred years ago or something like that, the cultures, if you didn't have stuff, you didn't have access to stuff, you just made it and you could just make stuff. Like you it, it might take you some time, but you just make it. Yeah, and the men made most of the bigger baskets. Um, the men were very first to make the baskets, and then the ladies took over when they had the Civil War, had the Emancipation Proclamation because men had to find jobs and you know find a way of living to take care of their families. And the woman, they really didn't have to; they just took care of the kids in the household. All right. Um. So they took over after the Civil War ended. Yeah, just so you know, Bonnie was saying that that was amazing how you make them so decorative. And Laura said that they're, these are not just baskets, they're actually works of art. Which is why I know like sometimes we have artists on here that will show you when you guys can do things along with them. But this is like, this is really a generational thing. You, there's nothing, There's yeah, this is like um, way more than that. This is definitely just sharing the culture of what this culture is the Gullah culture part of that and what some of the history of it and then seeing some of it and a lot of times in Charleston you can go and the women are sit and they're making these and you can sit and like watch them for a little bit make them too um it's really very interesting so I've added some color to it right yeah very cool Very, very just cool. wanted to say I have to get off now I've got to run an errand but this was so interesting and thank you so much for sharing with us your your uh, history and your very talented uh, craft there thank so you. Thank, thank you very, very much, much. For, for being on here Susan I appreciate it uh y'all everybody have a good day you too. um and Ross said, thank you very much for this interesting presentation. Your time is appreciated. Um, I was gonna say, I, we can go ahead. It's, we've been on for about an hour.
And I know you have another um, show at 3.15, so I would love to just give you 15 minutes to rest. And <laughs> <laughs> if there's such a thing as, I don't know what the rest would look like for you at the moment. <laughs> uh, when I get home, I shut my eyes as soon as I jump in my bed. <laughs> yes, yeah, I can imagine. Um, but I wanted to say thank you very much for sharing your time with us. Um, I did share um, the website for her. If anybody would like to get on there and take a look at some of the other baskets that she's made or purchase anything, I know she can ship all over the world as well. Um, if you have not been able to make it to traveling to the U.S. or to Charleston or to any of these areas, it, there you might just it might it's kind of like being there, watching her, and then having something sent to the house. Um, I know when I've been to Turkey, we've had people that have ordered plates they've bought it and then they've given it to the cashier and then they will ship it to their house so they're not carrying it in their luggage so um jennifer i wanted to say thank you if you all would like to unmute yourselves you can um thank you very much appreciate like it thank you thank you thank you jennifer thank you thank you yes thank you very much So thank you all. Um, Jennifer, just so you know, uh, Laura said many thanks. This has been mesmerizing to watch. Jane said, thank you. Mike said, thank you so much. Wexon said, thanks. So we've had everybody else say thank you in the meeting. And, I, appreciate um, I appreciate your time very much for taking the time out and for setting everything up it's not easy to go ahead and prop everything up there while you're sitting at work still well, i was already so. propped up in the last show <laughs> yeah well thank you thank you very much it's been very very interesting thank you Wish we can it. come down and see you in person i'm in canada so i can't come down to see you <laughs> no hopefully hopefully you can make it at some point maybe maybe so it's a great place to visit all right well my, uh, my, my my lady at the show so she can actually deliver her basket if she needed to I, if she just got to order and tell me what she need i could send it with the lady because she lives in canada <laughs> i don't live there but <laughs> oh oh she works in canada <laughs> oh oh very cool that's neat well thank you helen we appreciate you being on and and tuning in all the way from canada and thank right. you, Susan, for having this on. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. I'm going to... Um... I'm going to go ahead and it's now 3.01. So I'm going to go ahead and end our call. So I'd like to thank you all for being on and uh, for taking the time to sit and learn and listen about basket weaving. Might be something that inspires you to go and weave your own basket or seek out Jennifer's one-on-one -on -one, um, weaving techniques or another one close by to you. All right, thank you. And you all have a great Saturday afternoon.